everyone, this is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio and today we're going to discuss storage options. So I want you to raise your hand if you are a paint by number addict at this point. Me, me. Okay, so <laughs> why is that important? Well, first of all, storage is for everyone. So these storage ideas are going to be for the person who just started and has their first kit all the way to the person who has a hundred kits. So I'm gonna give you a couple of variations on how to store your painting supplies. There's been a couple of great ideas thrown around. And I'm gonna tell you, I have always used, for the last probably 10 years or so, the containers that I get from the Chinese restaurant. So every time we get takeout, um, I have a meal that will come in one of these. It is microwavable, it is dishwasher safe. So I was using them for a while for leftovers, but then they migrated into my art studio, which meant they held brushes and polymer clay tools and whatever you can think of because they have a lid. Well, now you can purchase these. Now the ones that you can purchase, and I'm gonna show you in the description the link for, are black with a clear lid Either way, it doesn't matter. I couldn't really find the white ones. They probably come from like a um, restaurant supplies chain or something, but I don't care what color it is. I just love the idea. So this one was free because it was a takeout, but I need way more than just a couple of these for my paint by numbers because I have 70 something. So let's say we just got a new kit and we've opened it up and we've got our supplies laying here. So what I can do is put the paint pots in here Add my paint brushes if I use those. And if I've mixed any colors, I can throw that little pot in there as well. And then I have my reference sticker that comes with most paintings. So how am I going to do that? I can either just lay it in there and I can see what it's going to be, which painting this is. One of our members at the group suggested she laminates hers and just attaches it. Well, Anna Banana actually sends theirs with a sticky back paper so you can peel this off and attach it to the top if you would like. But for those of us who may not have those options, what I came up with, because I've been packing and moving, is putting it on the inside and just using shipping tape, like packing tape, clear paper packing tape, to adhere it to the inside of our container. But if you don't have a way to laminate, this is your alternative, okay? So I've taped it on the inside, it's in there, and now this kit is ready to go. The best part of this is I can stack multiples on top of each other and put them on a shelf or however I wanna store them. So this is a basket from the Dollar Tree, so it cost me $1. And you can take these and file them this way. When you need to know which kit you have, you can just pull it out and use it. All right, so that's one option, which I absolutely love. For me, this isn't as space saving as I need it to be because I have 70 paintings. If I had 70 of these meal prep boxes stacked up on each other, I, or you know, even laying in a way that I could go through them, it would still take up a lot of space. But this is how I do the ones I'm working with at the time. So when I open up a package of the ones I'm gonna show you, I actually put them in one of these boxes while I'm working with it. So I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna to go to the next option. I know I've discussed this, my tools of the trade video, but what I bought are these clear envelopes that have a repositionable adhesive here to keep it sealed. So when I get a new kit, I set up a package like this. I take the envelope and I'm gonna put the size in the description for you guys and the link for these particular envelopes because they hold everything so beautifully and perfectly. Um, but anyway, so I put my paint pots in there. I put my paint brushes that came with it and, and I also put the photo of what is inside this particular kit and I seal it up. And then the way I store them is like this. So I have these bins that I got a long time ago. You know, you know you've seen those cube storage. Well, this is a cube storage fabric bin. 
And I have my paint kits in here ready to go. So if whenever I'm ready to paint, I can look through here and I can see which painting kit goes with which canvas. And that is how I store. So you can see, I kind of have these to where I can file through them, look at them, decide which one I want and pull it out. These I just had recently and I laid them on the top for now. But that's how you store a lot of them. Now, the ones that I have as a work in progress, if I've already started the painting, then I move those kits from that bin that I just showed you into a big clear Ziploc bag. Now, the reason I do that is just so I know these are the ones I have working. I'm in progress on every one of these. Once I finish these, then the leftover paint will come out and go into a different section, just somewhere else. That I keep the, the leftover paints, but I will put them in like a bag just like this, you know, for if I need to replace paints for another kit. I hope that made sense. You can also store these packets in this container. Now, I'm sorry that looks so dirty. I spilled chocolate. So you can see, I'm gonna get a lot of kits in this bin that cost me a dollar. And that way I can file through here and see which kit I need for which canvas. Okay, now let's talk about how to store your canvases. So let's say that you have canvases that you're working on or that you've completed. Now you guys know that for a while I was able to dry mount mine on a board like this. I have put my canvases that are not on a backboard or a dry mount board in between these ones that have been dry mounted. And that way they are staying flat and so then my option is I can take this stack and put them down in a box and I can go through them and find the ones that I need. The, the canvas I'm working on or the canvas I've completed, I keep separate. But so here's the other option. You've seen these really expensive portfolios on Amazon, at Michael's, at Joann's, at all these places. And they are really nice and they have a handle and they're fancy schmancy and whatever. But you guys, the other night I had this epiphany and realized that I sell a tote that is perfect for our canvases. So what is it? It is a chalk couture transfer tote like this. And I can't even show you the whole thing. So I'm gonna enter a picture right here. There's a pocket in the front. So if you ever have the eight and a half by 11 smaller canvases that we have, um, that I've done a video on about how to do your own, those can slide in here along with whatever you need to put in here. Um, reference guides, whatever you can, you can store here. It is large enough for an 18 by 24 item. So what I've done is I've put a cardboard stiffener, basically just a piece of cardboard in here to keep it stiff. And my paintings, because they're 16 by 20, will slide into this tote if I have them on a dry mount board, I'm not gonna need this cardboard stiffener, but some of them I don't. So what I can do is I can actually slide these canvases into my tote. And this is how I can store them, either while I'm working on them or while I'm waiting for them. If they're works in progress or if they're works that I'm gonna be doing soon, they can slide in this tote. This tote is lightweight, it has handles on it, and the best part is, you guys, it's $19.99, plus your tax and your shipping wherever you are. Um, I just thought, hello, beautiful, love it. Um, so that is how this works. Now, for those of you who keep your canvases rolled, then the other option would be when I roll my canvas, I take a label and I hold the canvas closed with a white sticky label that I have put the name of the canvas on and then I stick it down into 
a bin or a crate. And that's how I store them if they're rolled. So give me a second, I'm gonna show you what I do with those. So I have this little round bucket. Now you could use a bigger one. This one's actually very dusty. It's been in storage while we've been moving. But if you have your canvases um, rolled, you can stick them down in a bucket like this. And this will hold a ton of canvases that are rolled. This is actually three canvases rolled on one of the little foam swords that we call them in my house. Um, and so you can see once there's a bunch in here, then you can get that those just stand up. So I just put that little white sticker label on there with the name of it and it goes down in my bin. And there are, like I said, there's taller bins, there's bigger ones, but that was just a very inexpensive one I found at Dollar Tree. Okay, and lastly, to store your canvases. This is a very inexpensive idea. This is how I've stored other things in the past. So I thought I would share this with you. Now I am, I'm gonna be demonstrating with smaller pieces of foam board than what they sell at the store. The ones at the store, I believe are 30 by 50. I'm not, I can't remember for sure, but anyway, buy two pieces of foam board from Michaels, the thinnest you can find. And what you're gonna do is take the two pieces and put them together at that point right there, like a book. And then you're gonna take masking tape or shipping tape or something like that. And right now all I have is shipping tape. And you're going to make a hinge. Try not to wake my husband up, that's not working. Okay, and we're gonna make a hinge by putting these two together, sorry, start at the very top and bringing it down. Oh my God, this is so hard I'm trying to sit here and show you. All right, so it's super messy because I'm, staying, I'm sitting in a chair instead of standing at the countertop. You're hinged together, so basically it's like a book, and you will take your canvases, your completed canvases, your you know whatever the ones you're about to paint, and you can put them inside this book and shut it, and it will protect your canvases while you're waiting to get to them. Okay, so that, like I said, the foam board you'll be buying is larger. Leave it larger. This just happens to be ones that I had paintings attached to, and so that's what I had on my in my stash. But um, anyway, so that is, you guys, how that works. So your canvases are tucked neatly inside this little book-type portfolio, and that's one way to store them. Okay, I hope you liked all these ideas. So you guys, the links for all the things that you can purchase are in the description below. Not sure where the description is. Look at the title of the video. There's a little arrow to the right of it. If you click that little arrow, then you're going to be able to open up all the information I have put in here for you. I will also be typing all of this into my blog so that you can go to the blog and just have a page of just links of all the things that I talk about in all my videos. All right, you guys, I hope you found this helpful and I hope you will give me some feedback about what you thought of these storage ideas. Everybody's got some great ideas. These are just the ones that I think have been very efficient and helped me to stay organized with my paintings. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Be sure to stay safe and don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment, and go join us at the group. I'll see you back soon.